Hi guys, welcome back to the next part in our series for Blender Basics. In today's tutorial, we're going to be learning about how to add meshes to the scene, add lights to the scene, and have a look at what other things that you can add to the scene. Also, after we add our object to the scene, we're going to be showing how to move those objects around the scene workspace, how to scale them up and down. Then we're going to look at how we're going to rotate the objects, and finally, duplicating objects in the scene. Once we finish adding objects to the scene, we're going to hop into edit mode, what we've discussed in the previous episode, and we're going to look at how we move vertexes, edges, and faces, and also what we mean by extruding those vertex edges and faces to create custom objects. So let's get started and have a look at adding meshes to the scene. So here we are in Blender. If you notice, I'm in the updated version of Blender, 2.93. This is different from 2.91. I'm in Alpha, so this is more of an experimental version of Blender. I do recommend you go to the website and just update the stable version, just to make sure everything is working, you don't have any bugs. So like we saw last episode, here is the splash screen. I'm just going to click out of it. And take note today that I'm on the Mac, so my shortcut keys will be slightly different so anytime I said control and a keystroke, on Mac it would be command. So on Mac, command is the control. All right, so here's the scene. What we're gonna do first is delete all the objects. So I'm gonna push A, X, and enter, just like we discussed in the first episode. So let's add a mesh to the scene. In 3D modeling, we refer to objects as meshes because when we go into edit mode, you can see the vertexes, edges, and faces. It kind of looks like a mesh. To add a mesh to the scene, you press Shift A and you're presented with a menu. These are all the cool things that you can add to the scene just to get your workflow started. Let's look at the meshes. We have a plane, which looks like this. It's a flat plane. It hasn't been extruded. It doesn't have any 3D elements to it. It's just a flat plane. Let's delete that. X, enter. Shift A again. We have the cube, which you see when we open Blender. Enter. We also have a circle that is not filled in, it's just the edge of the circle. X, enter. And so on and so forth. You have a few basic 3D meshes here that you can add to get your workflow started. You can also add things like lights right here. So the normal light that I normally add to a scene is the point light. And please remember, as mentioned in the first episode, you will only see these lights really in their full form when you're in the rendered view mode up here. So looking at this menu, there are tons of things that you can add to the scene. In the upcoming Blender episodes, we'll discuss a few of these, but we generally don't need to know all of them. That's up to your exploration. So let's add a few objects to the scene. Let's add a cube. I'm going to deselect it by clicking out here in the scene space. Let's also add cylinder. Now as you can see the cylinder has been placed in the center origin, the world origin. That's represented by this point right here. So right now it's colliding with our initial cube. So we want to move it somewhere else. How we move objects in Blender is really simple. So we want to grab this object. So the shortcut key for grabbing objects is G. I'm going to push G and as you can see I'm grabbing and moving this object. Now take note, this is very important, the view that you're looking at the object will influence where the object moves. It's kind of like an illusion. Sometimes you think you're moving an object to the left, but actually it's moving to the left and back. You can't really tell. If I rotate the view this way and I push G, it moves this way. If I rotate the view a little bit more and push G, it's moving where I'm moving my mouse, but I'm not sure if it's going towards me or behind me. So let's undo and get the cylinder back to the world origin. I'm just going to Command Z. So how can we move this object in a more controlled way so we don't lose track of where it is in 3D space? Well, we know that G is to move, but you can also push another shortcut key to lock it into one of the XYZ axes. And this helps a lot when you're trying to make micro movements or more, much more controlled movements of the Let's try it out. I'm going to push G, and I'm going to push X next. Now, because I push G and I push X next, it registers the X as an axis, not delete. 
So if I push X, and you can see that the red line on our grid has highlighted, and now the object only wants to move along this line when I move my mouse. So I'm going to move it right here. I'm going to try that again, but on the Y axis. G for grab, Y. And now the object moves on the Y axis. When it comes to like precision modeling, it's really good to move things on the axes first. And then when you get close to where you want it, you can free move it based on your viewpoint. That way you are being much more controlled and you're not succumbing to the illusion of it just moving to the left, but then you don't notice that it's moving towards you or away from you. Let's move it one more time, G, but on the Z axis. Z is up and down. In any 3D modeling software, and also machines like the CNC machine or a 3D printer, Z is always the up and down axis. Okay, so that's moving objects. Let's delete the cylinder and focus on the cube. Cylinder selected, X, enter. Let's choose this cube. Now we're going to scale the cube. To scale objects, you push S. S on the keyboard. And if you just drag your mouse, the object will scale up and down based on your mouse. The cool thing about Blender is you can actually drag your mouse off the interface and it will just repeat and come from the other side. So you can infinitely drag. When you click again, you finish your scale. Rotating objects is just as easy. So we're going to push R for rotate. Then I move my mouse and as you can see, the mesh is rotating. Again, this is restricted to the view you're looking at the cube. If I were to change my view and push R this time, it will rotate in a different direction. So this could get really confusing or hard to control, and that is why we use the axes. So I'm going to Command Z, so it's back to its original state. And now I'm going to push R, but I can choose an axis to rotate along. So let's say X. Now it's locked on the X axis. Let's rotate it on the Y. R, Y. And as you can see, it's locked on the Y axis. Let's rotate it on the Z. R, Z. And it rotates around the Z axis. This is really powerful when it comes to controlling the rotation of a mesh in your scene. So always try to use X, Y, Z wherever possible so that you're not rotating in a way that is unexpected. I'm going to undo and bring the cube back to its original state. And there's one thing I can tell you about when it comes to shortcut keys. So we just figured out that if we push R and Y, it will rotate along the Y axis. But you can also put in degrees of rotation right after that. So this is a cube, it's hard to tell. So I'm just going to change the cube here. I'm going to scale it, but I'm going to lock it on the Y axis. So when I scale, it scales up only on the Y axis. So now we have a rectangular object. This will make it easier for you to see the rotation. Let's rotate this along the x-axis, but by 90 degrees. R on the x-axis, and then I'm going to type in 90 degrees. And as you can see, the mesh has rotated on the axis by 90 degrees just by those keystrokes I typed in. You can see what you're doing at the top left here. I pushed R to activate rotation. Then I pushed X along the global X axis of the scene. And then I typed in 90 and it completed the operation. So when you're happy with that, you just click. Let's try it again one more time. Rotate with R along the Y axis this time. And let's go 45 degrees. So I typed in 45 degrees. So now our mesh is rotated on the Y axis by 45 degrees. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's undo all the way back. I like to get back to the cube. And the last thing I want to show you is how you duplicate objects. To duplicate objects, pretty straightforward. You just select the object that you want to duplicate, and then you push Shift D, and you move your mouse. Now, it's flying off in a different direction. I want to duplicate it along the Y axis. So while I'm still holding it here, I'm just going to push Y, and it locks to the Y axis. Let's multiple select both of these cubes and duplicate it. So I'm going to click this one first. Holding Shift, I'm going to click this one next. And then Shift D, let's move it along the X axis. 
So each mesh now is in its own object mode. So we can edit these manually by going into their edit mode. Take note, the more objects you add to the scene, the slightly slower your system will become. There are other ways to create duplicates, such as arrays. Those are modifiers, and we'll talk about modifiers in a future video. They're just quick operations that automatically do a task for you. Instead of you having to manually shift duplicate all these cubes, it will set an array and you just put the number of cubes you want. That's for a future lesson. And finally, the last thing I want to show you today is how do you edit this object in edit mode? We discussed object in edit mode in the last episode. When you go into edit mode, you can do some really powerful things with your mesh. But to go into edit mode, let's hop in by pushing tab. And as you can see, the vertices, edges, and faces are highlighted. I'm just going to deselect all that by clicking outside. And let's apply what we learned about moving, rotating, and scaling to just these vertices, edges, and faces to edit this object. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to choose this vertex. So in order to move this vertex, it's the same concept as when we were out in object mode. You push G for grab, and you can free move the vertex. You can also lock it. To an axis. So I just push G. I'm now going to push X to lock it, and you can lock it to an axis. Let's pull it right back here. I'm just making a random shape today. If I hold Shift and click this vertex as well, then I multi selected both of these, and let's push GZ. Grab G on the Z axis, and let's slide these up. Cool, right? Let's go to face mode, choose this face by left clicking, and let's scale this face down. So I'm just going to push S for scale, and you can actually scale this down just because you've selected the face. So you couldn't do this in object mode because in object mode it will select this entire object and scale it. But when you come into edit mode, you can choose very fine details based on these vertexes, edges, and Faces, and then apply your operations. So let's say I don't like this top face being at this angle. While it's selected, I'm going to push R, and you can rotate it. So you can get some really crazy shapes going. But I'm going to lock it on the x-axis, and I'm just going to make it more flat. One more time, I just rotate with R, and then I locked it to the x-axis by pushing X, and now you can control that in a much more fine way. If you want to rotate the entire object, you push A to select all, and then R, let's say on the x-axis again, X, and you can rotate the whole thing. Notice that because we've rotated this in edit mode, when we tap out and come to object mode, it will be rotated as well. So let's hop back into edit mode. And that is quite simply how we edit vertexes, edges, and faces in edit mode using grab, scale, or rotate. Let's do something new here. I'm going to tab out to object mode. I'm going to delete this object by pushing X and enter. And I'm going to add a plane. Shift A mesh plane. Now as mentioned before, this has no 3D features. It's a totally flat plane. But we can extrude this to become an object. Check this out. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to go to Edge Select Mode. I'm going to click outside to deselect everything. And I'm going to click this edge. Now, to extrude or make a new edge, I'm going to push E. And as you can see, it's making a new face for me and an edge, along with a couple new vertexes. But I don't want it to go up or down, so I'm going to lock it on the x-axis. So here's a new edge. This is quite simply how you do architecture models in 3D, like how you do a layout for a building or a condo unit. Okay? You build the floor, then you build the walls exactly like this. Let's go E and Z and extrude up. Let's go E and Y. Y, you can't see anything because it's going back into the distance. So along this axis, you won't be able to see. It doesn't work. So I'm just going to push X instead. Now, I want to connect this edge back to this edge right here. Very simply, you just choose this edge, hold and shift, 
choose this edge and you push F and you just fill that edge. Isn't that cool? Automatic fill. Now our entire object is still only made of planes. It has no 3D thickness. So for the last thing in this episode, I'm going to show you a little bit of the modifier stack that you can apply to objects. So I'm going to tab out of this edit mode. This is the object we've created so far. I'm going to come to the modifier panel. We'll go into more detail about the options you can play here in a future lesson. But for now, I just want to show you a little teaser. You're going to add a modifier and choose solidify. Just look at how many there are. There's so many crazy things that you can do in 3D. I'm going to choose solidify right now. Now, with this modifier enabled, because this object is selected, I can increase the thickness of what I have drawn. And I can choose, does it go in or does it go out? So let's say about here. And there's so many different other options that you can choose. So I'm going to click even thickness because I saw some weird sloping happening here. So I'm going to choose even thickness to make it even all the way around. Now this modifier, you can keep it active right now or you can apply it. I'm going to apply it by clicking this down arrow and saying apply. And the modifier is gone, and now that change has become permanent. The reason we use modifiers is sometimes you don't need to apply it, and you can leave it active right here. And that way, while you're modeling, you can always come back, no matter how many changes you've made to the model, you can come back and you can change things, like the thickness again. This is called non-destructive editing, and that's why modifiers exist. When I apply it, that has become permanent, so I can't change that. And the only way to change the thickness again is to manually pull the faces, like grab this face in, grab this face in, and that way I'm still kind of destroying the model. All right, so that is how we use edit mode to create a custom object, starting with a plane, and then we use the modifier to make it thick and solid. So now if we tab into edit mode, you can see we have many more faces that we can select. Now we can custom move these. So let me select these two by holding shift and clicking them. G, Y. And we can create some really cool shapes. So that brings us to the end of our current episode for Blender Basics 1.2. What we've learned in this lesson is how to add meshes and lights to the scene, moving objects around the scene using scale, rotate, and grab. We learned how to duplicate objects in object mode, and then how we applied grab, scale, and rotate in the edit mode of the mesh. Feel free to get experimental and create some funky shapes. Uh, and you can also explore the modifiers once you've done your mesh. All right, thanks for listening. Have